Packers fans, stay up to date on all of your Packers news this season via our newsletter. You can sign up for the PackersNews.com and more Journal Sentinel newsletters by clicking on the link in the brief field of this video. Packers fans, welcome into the Green 19 podcast from JS Online and PackersNews.com. I'm Cassidy Hill. Spoon, this is normally where I say joined as always by Tom Silverstein and Ryan Wood, but this week it's just me and you, kid. Yeah, sometimes uh, you got to just uh, do what you can and power through. Go solo, yeah. Go, go solo with just the two of us. Right, That's exactly. kind of what it feels like. So just Spoon and I this week. Ryan will be back next week. Um, but there's still a lot to talk about, you know. Lots to talk Lots about. Lots to talk this about. Team they just off the bye week. They just won't go away, Spoon. They, they won't go away. You know, and and what's weird is that um, other teams are trying to go away mm -hmm. while they sit here. You know, in the last two weeks, there's been teams that are starting to fade in this cruddy like the NFC. Yeah, the Giants. Seattle mm -hmm. lost again on um, Thursday night, and uh, you know it, it's man. I, I hate to say it, they're not. I still don't believe they're making the playoffs, but the, it's it's getting interest. It's going to mm -hmm. be interesting at the end if they can beat uh, the Rams, which I think they will, and then they get to Miami. Mm -hmm. You know, Miami's lost two in a row, and they're going to Buffalo this week. Mm -hmm they'll be really fired up to play, you know, at home on Christmas Day. So that'll be a heck of a matchup. But whatever, everything seems to be falling into place for them right now. But they got to win four yeah. straight games. And, and that's, that's kind no of – no easy task. Right. That's the crux of the issue. No matter what happens with Seattle – and let's just lay out the playoff picture real quick here because – If you can, go for it. <laughs> I might be making it up. Um because whatever happens over the next four games, that, of course, for now is still going to be the focus because they are still mathematically in it. They ha they need Seattle. They needed Seattle to lose twice, and Seattle lost last night to the 49ers. So they, they still need – They need Kansas City next week. Right. And they play um, – oh, doggone it. Titans, I think. Right. So Seattle just needs to lose one of their next Jets, three games. Jets. They play Jets. And as you said, I mean, Kansas City, Jets, there's – there's very feasibly another loss in there for Seattle. So they need Seattle to lose one more game, and they need either Washington or the Giants to lose three of their next four. <laughs> now, and Washington the, and the Giants play each other. Correct. And then... With Washington coming off a bye and the Giants falling, pretty much falling apart. And then I think the Giants also play... I, I want to say... They play the Dolphins again. I'm trying to remember. I looked at the schedule last night, and there are very – they play the Eagles. There is very feasibly three losses in the Giants' future. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly going to be hard for Washington to win their next four games as well. Yeah, I, I think Washington's probably the strongest wild card candidate right, right now. They got the Giants this week. They're on an upward trajectory. A, after having a bye mm -hmm. um, and beating the Giants the week before that. So I don't think that's a team the Packers have any chance of catching. The other interesting one is Detroit. Yeah. I mean, they've been red hot, but they're going to play the Jets in the cold. Um, Jared Goff's not typically a good cold-weather quarterback. Uh, but if the Lions win that game, mm -hmm. they're in a really good spot. Um, that, that would be a, definitely a blow to whatever slim chances the Packers have, even if – the Packers were to beat them, I, I'm not sure where that would put them. Like, if, if if it came down to it, a tiebreaker between the Packers and Lions, I think it's going to come down to, like, strength of schedule or something like right. that, some crazy thing like that. But, again, we're kind of – Yeah, all of that, no matter what happens with the rest of these teams, and I did pull it up, the Giants have the Commanders, the Vikings, the Colts, the Eagles. They need to lose three of those four. They could They could probably beat the Colts. Yeah. But they could very easily lose to the Commanders, the Vikings, and the Eagles, especially considering those are all away games for That's, the Giants. Um, Seattle's? 
No, this is the Giants. Oh, the Giants, yeah. Giants have to play at Washington, at Vikings, at the Eagles. Yeah, they'll they'll lose at least two of those, yeah. maybe three. None of this matters if the Packers don't win their next four games. Right. It, it's that's you know, it, it's just all we're all I was doing was bringing up the landscape like mm -hmm. man, you know, everybody's doing whatever they can to make it a, a race to the finish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as um, on Five Questions with Leroy Butler, we each asked each other to pick two games that could have made a huge difference in the Packers season if they'd gone the other way. And I picked the, the Giants nice. in Washington. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the tiebreakers and everything would be so much in their favor. Mm -hmm. And they were on the inside the 10 yard line against the Giants mm -hmm. and they had every chance to beat Washington. I mean, 10 chances to beat Washington yeah. and they couldn't do it. What's funny too is that the the Packers loss to Washington is what sent the commanders on this little streak they've been on. Yeah, yeah, they played pretty well against the Packers, gave them a lot of confidence. A lot of teams yeah. get a lot of confidence <laughs> playing against Green Bay. Has been, this has been team's get right game this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. All of that being said, it, this coming game, Monday night versus the Los Angeles Rams, Baker Mayfield in only his second game with the Rams. Baker Mayfield played lights out in his first game with the Rams. It, it was honestly one of the more impressive things I've seen See, to come in after a day and a half. Yeah, that was that was impressive. I Everybody has been saying, you know, that he was tremendous. And I, think I went back so and watched relative this game relative to what he was dealing with is why it was impressive yeah yeah he came in didn't really know the offense um did a nice job but he got sacked like four or five times he i mean he was continually throwing four or five yard passes six yard passes. he just kept the chains moving mm -hmm. they stunk through three quarters and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden had two drives and they were lucky enough to be playing the god-awful raiders who <laughs> you know, got screwed by some penalties. And it, I just wasn't that impressed with Baker Mayfield. It was it was impressive what you, you yeah. were saying, that he, he came in in two days' work and, and won a game. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I thought was the impressive part about it, just how he did it in the situation he did it. And coming against this Packer defense, he might throw for like 400 yards. Here's know? the thing with Baker Mayfield, though, and I'm, I'm curious your opinion. He could come in here Monday night, and think about him, he played here on Christmas Day last year mm -hmm. with the Browns. He could legitimately come in here on Monday night, throw four touchdowns, 400 yards, you know, 68% completion rate, if not higher. Yeah. He could also throw three to four interceptions. Right, right. That's exactly what I was thinking as you were saying that. Um, yeah, he could come in and just absolutely stink up the joint. you got to get some pressure on him. Uh, the Rams' offensive line is just – beat up mm -hmm. and they didn't look good at all against the Raiders I think there's chances for the Packers to put pressure on them uh I, none of their wide receivers scare you right they shouldn't although you know if you're the Packers everybody should scare you <laughs> uh there's it's no the, reason they should lose this game none right it's really a it would be icing on top of the world you know, a putrid season if they um, – is icing the right word? I guess it would it be like I guess it depends on which mud direction or you're dirt going here. or whatever on a putrid season. It would be like yeah. kicking kicking the final bit of dirt, yeah. you know, on their grave if they lost to the Rams. I, I am going to argue with you on one point there about there should – there is a Rams receiver that would scare me if I was the Packers defense. And it's just because of what he's done to them in the past and the holes in this Packers defense. And that's Jefferson because he's a really good deep threat for mm -hmm. the Rams. And that's where the Packers can get beat mm -hmm. a lot, especially when they still are, you know, I don't even know if they know what they're doing at safety. Yeah. I mean, Rudy Ford's played pretty solid there. But, but no. I mean, you remember last year was the Rams' very first play from scrimmage? Yeah. Was that 74-yard touchdown to Jefferson? And he was wide open. Yeah. That's and good he's point. done that to the Packers before. Yep. Um, and so I, just because of this, again, the situation with this Packers defense and what that particular strength is, that would be the receiver I would keep an eye on. I agree. I agree. Especially without Cooper Cup. 
Yeah. And they and the Rams won't have Cooper Cup. Um, no Matthew Stafford. Is there anything else? I mean, that you saw my point, but is there anything else really on this Rams offense? This Packers defense has been, to use your word, putrid at times this year. But should this be one of those offenses where, even though it's Sean McVay, even though it, you know, Baker Mayfield could have a day where they can also kind of feast? Absolutely. Absolutely. They should completely shut down the Rams running game, even though um, they're on the cusp of um, – setting an all-time record for the worst yards per carry average. The Packers run defense. defense. Yeah. I, I just, you know, Cam Akers doesn't scare you. Right. They, they should dominate at the line of scrimmage in the run game. And that'll make them – that would make them pretty one-dimensional, I guess. And in a weather game – or in a game like Monday night where I think the high is 14, you need to be able to have a ground game, correct? Yeah, you do. I – I think Baker Mayfield and Rodgers are two Midwest cold weather guys who can – well, Rodgers is from California, but, but he's he's got a lot of experience playing in the cold, and I mm-hmm. think Baker Mayfield is too, does mm-hmm. too. Um, so I don't think it's a big deal for either of them to throw in the cold. You know, they're healthy. They've got Devondre Campbell back. Um, they've had a week of rest. I mean, there's no way they should lose this game. Before, before we flip to the other side of the ball, um, let me figure out the best way to ask this. I Let me preface this by saying I completely understand that this Eagles offense with quite possibly the MVP of the league leading it is, com- is completely different from this Rams offense mm-hmm. that's kind of piecemealed together right now. I understand they are completely different. Joe Barry had 10 days to prepare for that Eagles offense yeah, and came out with a game plan that I still to this day have yet to really figure out. Yeah. Do you trust that this game plan will be set accordingly? Well, at least the one thing you can count on is that he knows the Rams offense. I mean, he worked there That's for fair. a year. Um, but I'll take Sean McVay versus Joe Barry and uh, uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots uh, – <laughs> <laughs> you know, match up any day of the week. You know, McVay's going to outcoach Joe Barry nine and a half out of ten times. But I don't think it really matters. <laughs> I just really – I think the Rams are so bad uh-huh. and so beat up that um, you could probably come up with a bad game plan and still win. Mm-hmm. So as long as the Packers – if the Packers are, like, turning the ball over, like, five times or – um, you know, some bad stuff's happened on special teams, then then I could see them losing. Mm-hmm. But if they can come out there and outscore them, then they should be okay. And yep. that's something that a month ago we would have scoffed at the idea of. Yeah. But now where this offense currently is and with the emergence of Christian Watson and the fact that it's going to be cold and that's when A.J. Dillon starts to shine. And A.J. Dillon has had two really good games in a row. He has. I feel like this offense actually can out can outscore a team that it needs to. Yeah. You know what's going to be really interesting? Um, Christian Watson, they're going to put Jalen Ramsey on Christian Watson. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be the first time. I mean, he's faced some pretty good corners, mm-hmm. you know, in Philadelphia and, and Chicago. But this could be the first time, like, someone matches up with him and they say, we're going to take you out of the game. Mm-hmm. I wonder how he'll react to that. I think it'd be very interesting. You know what could also be interesting is I'm curious, and I'd have to go back and look and see which corners have matched against Watson so far. I don't know if Christian Watson has matched up against a corner that's going to play the mental game as much as Jalen Ramsey does. Yeah. I mean, maybe he got some snaps against Darius Slay, who's, Mm. you know, can get in your head a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Ramsey, I assume, will be talking to him. And, um, you know, he's he's had some hard moments, but they put him in a really difficult position. They just tell him, go go cover this guy and, mm-hmm. um, and often don't give him help. 
So that would be interesting. I, I'd like to see him on Watson. I don't think they'll do it, but I'd like to see him on Watson like every down. <laughs> and, and let's see how Watson responds to that. Could be a eye-opening Right. Day. Because I think Watson could for sure beat him speed, but, you know, Jalen Ramsey's going to press you. Oh, yeah, he's going to beat the yeah. you know what <laughs> out of you. And he's he, going to get gonna his hands you on up. you. He's yeah. going to make you think he's pressing, and then he's going to back off. He's going to, um, you know, he plays leverage so well. Mm-hmm. There's just so many things that um, Christian Watson hasn't seen. Right. And it'll be a- So if you are Christian Watson, or let me rephrase this, if you're the Packers and you're, you, you know that the Rams could very possibly put Ramsey on Watson – what are you telling Watson this week to, not necessarily to prepare for, but the flip side, like to to do, so to speak? Like, is it just as simple as getting off the line clean? I mean, what are you sort of doing this week to prepare him? I would tell him um, prepare to possibly not see the ball a lot, mm. but be ready, you know. For that one play. One play, Exactly. Uh, there's going to be maybe some play action, some some play that, you know, he'll get off the line of scrimmage over Ramsey and he might be wide open. Mm-hmm. I would tell him this might be Alan Lazard's game. Mm-hmm. You know, this might be the game Alan Lazard has nine catches or, um, you know, Dobbs is back. I don't mm-hmm. know how much he'll play, but it could be a game he gets four or five balls. So um, it might be one of those things where – Christian Watson isn't a factor. That's a really good point and something that you probably do have to mentally prepare yourself for, especially after the the four game stretch he's had. Yeah, with eight touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. To, to I kind mean, of he know. probably thinks he, the rest of his career he's going to score two <laughs> touchdowns every game. You know, I mean, nobody stopped him. Uh, what I will be interested to see is okay. Now you've had two weeks. Mm-hmm. You've really he's established himself in many ways. How are you going to use him? You know, what can you do with those jet sweeps to throw a wrinkle? You know, can can you fake it? Can you have him do double reverses? Can you, you know, what can you do off of the things that, they ha- that they've that they shown so far? Because I'm trying to think against the Bears, that jet sweep, 21-yard touch. No, wait, how far was it? That was 21, it was 22. 40. Wasn't it 46 or something? Oh, that's like that? right. Dylan's was 21, is yeah. what I'm thinking of. The But the Watson jet sweep touchdown, I don't think there was any like eye candy to that. I, I feel like it was just a no. handoff. What happened was, um, you know, that was the one time they didn't they didn't react. Like on AJ Dylan's touchdown, um, Watson did a jet sweep and all, you could see the Bears all take a step to the left, and boom, there they went. Mm-hmm. You know, the other direction with Dylan. Um, yeah, I don't think there was anything really special with Watson's it was just touchdown. His speed versus yours. And yeah, he, he he got to the edge, mm-hmm. and that's all you. He had you know. a really good block from Sammy. But he did. Yeah. He did. It was. It was, and I think they said this after the game. It was the perfect call against what the Bears were playing at that time. Mm-hmm. So it turned out to be just you know good timing mm-hmm. but you know the rams they they'll have something for him to to try to slow him down and um i think it's really up to matt lafleur to come up with some different ways to use watson as you said though this could very well not be his game which is honestly kind of a compliment to him you know if they're gonna trot jalen ramsey out there and say just stay on him the whole time that's high praise yeah for absolutely a rookie it is. um that being said romeo dobbs very likely 99 percent chance he will be on the field on monday but as to how many snaps he gets that's going to be a little bit of a question this will be it'll be six weeks and a day since he injured his ankle versus detroit um with the high ankle sprain i, I mean do yeah. you just kind of easily fold him back see, in and and I asked LaFleur about it I was curious to see what his response would be you know I, I asked will there be any limitations on him and he was like oh you got to be realistic you know he's been out so long and I'm thinking to myself oh yeah but has he like gotten his game plan that they're going to throw to him like 12 times and he's <laughs> trying to make it seem like gamesmanship yeah like hey he, he's healthy because 
he was close to coming back against Chicago. I mm-hmm. think they could have played him against Chicago. They even and, warmed him up. Yeah, and then he had two weeks. He's had two weeks mm-hmm. to rest and then a full week of practice. I think they're sandbagging a little bit. I think he might play more than we think. Yeah, very well could be. And we've seen him at practice on Tuesday, which was sort of their just welcome back, get your legs underneath you practice. He was full go. Mm-hmm. Like he was 100% um, – Like, full speed is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I didn't notice anything different with him. So, you know, I mean, shoot, if if you could play. Yeah, he hasn't been through football stuff. That's probably the big thing, but he's practiced. And that would have been today. Yeah. Right? Yeah, in pads. So, you know, let's see if he's on the injury report tomorrow from today. Yeah, I doubt it. (laughs) I mean, Mm -hmm. I think he's ready to go. Yeah. How much does your game plan change if Aaron Donald is on the field versus isn't? A lot. Um, they've they've actually done a pretty decent job on Aaron Donald. They've frustrated him at times um, in the playoff game last year. And, um, you know, he's not going to be 100%. Mm-hmm. And he if wasn't he 100% plays. in the playoff game last year, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, if he plays. I don't think he's going to play. I think. I think LaFleur was just throwing that out there to show that they're not stupid enough to think that right. they shouldn't prepare for him a little bit. Um, we'll see. We haven't seen the injury Friday injury report Correct. if he practiced at all. But um, he changes everything. He's he's the most dominant inside pass rusher, you know, defensive tackle, and they move him all around and they create – try to create one-on-ones with him, and you have to double him constantly. LaFleur and Rodgers both even talked this week about how he can actually take out an entire swath of your playbook just because you can't run certain things against him. Mm -hmm. Is it – how much of that, in your opinion, would be, you know, you picture if Aaron Donald's not on the field, it'd probably be easier to run the ball straight up the middle. But he's such a good pass rusher, even as an interior guy. Can that just help what you want to do downfield too? Yeah, it he's he's a game wrecker. And so the one thing advantage the Packers have, um, and they used to do this, they figured it out finally when they used were playing the Bears a few years back when they had Khalil Mack and um Akeem Hicks, and they finally decided we're not gonna run the ball at Akeem Hicks. He's killing us mm-hmm. every single time. So with Rodgers, you know, you have that ability to not just change the direction, but like move guys around Mm -hmm. and say, all right, let's, let's bring that tight end in. And then we're going to run away from Aaron Donald. And, you know, so there's ways you can, I think the Packers have an advantage in that way, but if the guy is just tearing you up, he's tearing you up Mm -hmm. and and there's not much you can do about it, except put like three blockers on him. (laughs) Novel concept. They probably won't have David Bakhtiari again this week. He's still recovering from his appendectomy. LaFleur said it would be a long shot if he's out there. But, I mean, he's not playing. I mean, he feasibly, with this recovery, could not play again this year. I I mean, my God, the guy's been through so much. I wouldn't sit there and put him back out there until he's, you know. Let let his stitches heal. Yeah, because you you just know somebody's going to be punching up in there just to try. Oh, that makes me hurt just thinking about it. Yeah, well, he doesn't have an appendix anymore, so (laughs) I guess it's. But they could try to bust his stitches up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I I could totally see that happening. Once they get in the pile and nobody can see them doing it, and they're just. (laughs) But we'll get to see Zach Tom again at left tackle, and he was that was my next question against the Bears. The, and that was my next question was mm-hmm. Zach Tom seems like he can hold his own. He has. Um, eventually, you know, he'll get some Leonard Floyd. And um, as the season goes on, you know, teams will probably try to um, figure out how they Test can him. beat him. But, man, he's athletic. And um, he just – he, he battles every time. I think physically there's going to be some guys who are going to give him a lot of trouble. Yeah. But he moves so well in the run game, like coming off the double team blocks. He's very athletic. It's just if he were like Elton Jenkins' size, he'd be Elton Jenkins. Mm-hmm. You know, he'd be really, really good. 
I'm, I'm trying to see because I was about to say something and then I thought, you know what? I don't quite remember about one guy. So let's let's look this up. But I believe Spoon. Yes, I was right. Okay. You're not going to have David Bakhtiari, most likely. But as far as skill players go, this will be only the second game this season the Packers have had all their skill players together for a full game, presumably for mm. a full game. Mm. Because I think, you know, even Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs, we figured up, have played less than 70 snaps together. Right, like around 65. Yeah, and then, you know, there were times that Lazard was hurt. There were times that Sammy Watkins Cobb was, was hurt. There were times probably. Cobb was on IR. You're going to have all of your skill players on the field together. Is that a is that as big of a deal as it seems like it is? I think it's a big deal. I think it's just important to have Dobbs. I, I think um, Christian and Dobbs, Christian Watson and Dobbs are your future. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have them on the field. And um, regardless, they're two of your best players. I mean, they're two of your best receivers. Alan Lazard's probably, I still consider him their number one receiver. Mm -hmm. Um, but then those two, and I really think you got to get Samari Touré on, um, on the field more too. Get some explosiveness. You got some guys who can run. Um, I'm sorry, I like I love Sammy Watkins, great guy. Randall Cobb, I know the fans love him, but this is a young man's game, and you got to get those guys on the field. Do you think because of the fact though that they're all healthy, quote unquote healthy, that Touré will be inactive this week, maybe? Could be, could yeah. be, yeah. Um, I'd be a shame if he was. Yeah, I don't really know where else would they fit him in, I, unless they keep Patrick Taylor in. Active. Yeah, I don't know what they would, what they'll do there, because yeah. I don't know what he does on special teams. I can't remember if he's on the kick return team, but yeah, yeah, he may be inactive, which would really be a shame. Yeah, for sure. Um, don't give me a score, because that'll be in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel and Green Bay Press Gazette this week. But what is your prediction for this game? I, I think the Packers will win. I, I think everything's going in their favor. I I think I'm I'm gonna predict they win and with the caveat that if they lose, it's just um validates everything I've thought about them, which <laughs> is that they're not a good football team. Yeah. That um you know, they beat the Bears and everybody's all of a sudden talking about the playoffs. And I'm like, you know, you just beat a three and eight team <laughs> or three and seven team, right? And the and the Rams are four and nine. Yeah. So don't get too excited. Yeah. Uh, let's see let's see them beat a good team. Let's see them beat Miami, uh -huh. Minnesota, and Detroit. Then I then I might think they're back. Yeah. Um, but I just expect them to win this game. To beat the Vikings and the Lions, you've got to beat Miami. And to beat Miami, I think you've got to win this week. And just in terms of momentum. Oh, absolutely. And you can't. The season's over if they lose this game. Right. And everything that I've seen the past few weeks from both of these teams make me think that the Packers should win this game. I'm not going to say easily at all because I think Baker, May I think Baker Mayfield is still going to have a good box score game. Um, but he's also going to make some boneheaded turnovers. Yeah. And the offense, I think, can outscore him. I think – ABC would love if um, somehow Jordan Love got in the game and, <laughs> and had to, you know, the Packers got behind or yeah. something like that because this is a dud of a game for them on yeah. Monday night. You know, it they really need something to make it interesting. Can you remember before the season when we circled this game and we were like, this is going to be a great oh, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the stretch, playoff team. Yeah. Well, shows what we know. Um, Guys, I know we're going to sign off here, but we've still got a couple more days of, of content coming for you before a late Monday night game. So make sure you stay tuned to PackersNews.com for full coverage as we get ready for the Monday night game between the Packers and the Rams. Spoon will have his live blog before and during the game. Pete and I will be there for you after the game. And then, of course, we'll have our post-game Green 19 podcast with Spoon, Ryan, and I. Thanks so much, guys. Spoon, thanks as always. This has been the Green 19 Podcast from JS Online and PackersNews.com. Green 19!